Last month, the bipartisan delegation of current and former members of Congress visited Cuba. Earlier today, they released a report on their findings from that trip, with policy suggestions to improve U.S.-Cuba relations. You'll be hearing from the group's chairman, former Representative Louis Fry, along with former representatives James Symington and Michael Barnes, former Senator Dennis D. Consini, and current Wisconsin Congressman Toby Roth. Good morning and thank you for coming. My name is Lou Fry. I'm president of the former members of Congress and I had the privilege of being chairman of this bipartisan delegation, the first, I guess, in 25 years that uh, went to Cuba. And we have uh, all but one of the members here, John Christensen, congressman from Nebraska, is on his way to uh, Israel today. Uh, he was elected in 94 and uh, did a great job uh, with us. But we have with us Congressman Jimmy Symington from Missouri, Senator Dennis D. Consini from Arizona, Congressman Toby Roth, who is one day or two days a civilian now after 18 years uh, in the House, and uh, Congressman Mike Barnes, Walt Raymond, who uh, is the advisor to the former members and also uh, worked with the State Department, the White House, and Ambassador Tim Tall, who uh, served in Cuba uh, for some years in the U.S. interest section uh, and then was a U.S. ambassador. This was sort of a unique trip it was unique in the sense that it's the first time a bipartisan delegation has really gotten down to Cuba, had a chance to really look at what's going on, and we went without any really preconceived notions. And we're, as you can see, uh, all sort of backgrounds. I happen to be from Florida, and obviously have been close to the problem for a number of years. And I guess we had a chance to not only meet with most all the important people in Cuba, in the ministry, we talked to the dissidents, met with the cardinal down there, went out to the provinces, the Montanzas, met with the people in uh, the governments out there, saw the oil refineries, uh, shot basketball, played uh, dominoes, really had a pretty good chance to talk to a wide group of people. And, and I must admit, I was basically disappointed. Uh, I was disappointed because when I went down, I was hoping to find a great deal of discontent I was hoping to find that uh, there was revolution brewing in the street, and I was hoping to find an extremely strong dissident movement that was leading the country towards freedom. But instead, I think for all of us, we found a country where Castro is firmly in charge, despite the embargo in 62, despite their economy going into the tank when the $6.2 billion in direct economic aid and the $1.2 billion in military aid from the Russians went down, and despite the impact of Helms-Burton, which is keeping investment uh, out of that country. Uh, Castro is running that country, and as far as we can see, is going to run the country until he dies. And I think that's a, a fact of life that we have to deal with. On the other hand, as we told the Cubans, uh, the economic situation in our country in terms of legislation and that, the political reality is not going to change. And that's just a fact of life they're going to have to live with. There is no question that they don't trust us and we don't trust them. There is absolutely zero trust on either side. However, uh, we found a great many new people moving into Cuban government, those between maybe the age of 35 to 45 or 50. And in the area of economics, uh, I accuse them of suffering from creeping free enterprises. Uh, they are allowing certain things to happen, for instance, on the farms. Uh, if you work hard, you get one quart of milk and five bucks a month. If you work a little harder, you get three quarts of milk and eight dollars a month. If you don't work hard enough, they kick you out. There are 170 different occupations that you can run your own business. And uh, not a lawyer, doctor, Indian chief, but uh, there are occupations you can do that. They've converted to basically the dollar. Tourism is becoming important and it's hurting, <laughs> it's hurting their educational system. Who wants to work as a doctor for eight bucks a month or a lawyer for eight bucks a month when you can work as a bellhop uh, for eight dollars a day? And we went to the law school, talked to the students there and that, and, and it's sort of our apartheid uh, tourism. The uh, Cubans can't go, but, uh, but many people can go. 
Given this, however, there are winds of change blowing uh, in Cuba. Uh, given what's going on, there, there is a transition taking place. It appears that Castro is, is backing off a little bit, and some of the new people are kicking the tires a little bit. They don't know how far out they can go before they get their head chopped off. They don't know how much they can go from communism to, quote, Cuban socialism. Cuban socialism is whatever the devil they want it to be. Uh, however it applies in that particular situation. But, but there is true experimentation going on in the economic area. There's not in the political area. There is no freedom. There is no freedom of the press. Uh, there is no, no basic personal freedom over there, and, and that's a real problem. We met with the Minister of Justice, who's only in two weeks, and we told him that he probably could do more for his country than anybody else because he had the chance to relook at things, to look at the 500 to 700 political prisoners, and to take some action that would be recognized not only in this country, but worldwide. Given what we found, given the realities of Castro being there, and our policy for years has been trying to get him out, and I wish he would go out, and many of my friends in Florida wish he'd go out, but we don't think it's gonna happen. And given the political realities here, we still felt that it was time for a change, maybe. Time to re-examine the, the policies that we've had. Time to really look at what we could do to make some changes. And, and we'll talk about it in a minute, and different people talk about aspects of it. But we, two basic areas. One, the humanitarian area. Uh, people of Cuba are, are suffering. They're not starving to death. Uh, certainly don't have a heck of a good diet. But they're not starving to death. Uh, they uh, need supplies, they need food, they need medicine. Uh, no question that uh, Havana is a beautiful city, like a, a man or a woman who maybe is 80 years old and has a lot of lines, but you could see 50 years ago that uh, it was absolutely beautiful. The, no transportation, you know, power problems and uh, all that. But, uh, but, but even given that, we, we felt there are things we can do in the humanitarian area. And we think there are things we can do to fuel the transition that will eventually come in Cuba when Castro isn't there, when hopefully at that point it will become a democratic society. One last uh, element that was, I guess, interesting to all of us, uh, we expected, I suppose, a great deal of anti-American feeling. Most of us have been around the world. We've been communist countries. We've been all over. And you, you, you can pick that stuff up pretty quick. Uh, there isn't any real anger towards Americans. They really basically like us. Uh, they're more puzzled about our attitude than anything else. Uh, one of them said to me, what do you think we're going to do, invade Rhode Island? Uh, got about 13, 14 million people, that, you know, not exporting communism, not exporting subversion. They're just, they're just trying to get by. So their attitude really